Welcome everybody to Catfish Weekly, along with Chuck Davis and I'm Lyle Stokes. Tonight we have Chris Jones with us from Catfish Pursuit Guide Service, and we're going to get into that in just a little bit. How's it going, Chuck? It's going great. Um, the weather's been unbelievable down here. It's been the past few days. It's been in the 70s. I had some high winds yesterday, a little bit of rain this morning, but it don't even feel like it's two weeks from Christmas. It's... Uh, well, don't cry about that 70 degree weather because we don't have that here, do we, Chris? No, we don't. <laughs> what, what, what was y'all's uh, highest temps over the past week? Not 70. 64, I think. Last yeah, week. 64. That sounds about right. It, it's supposed to be like 60 or a little above 60 tomorrow, but then it starts peeling off again back to reality. Well, yeah, the, I know some of the guys in the Midwest up toward. Uh, you know, Ohio, Indiana, some of them guys got up in the 70s, I think. So Yeah, well, must be nice. Chris was out on the lake today fighting that wind. I don't know how he done it because it was blowing my garage door and the shop back and forth, so I know he had a mess in that wind. <laughs> the fish a bit better today than they have all week, so figure that out. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That's how it goes. Nothing wrong with that. Well, Chuck, we're going to talk about the Christmas giveaway tonight. Um you want to talk with with uh, Chris about some of the stuff, Chuck, or um, do we want to do the giveaway stuff first? Um, let, let's go over the uh, giveaway and uh, the people, <laughs> and then we'll uh, we'll move over to Chris and and let out one of the other prizes. Okay. Well, first off, this is going to be a pretty big giveaway. Um, we have to, to get in on this giveaway. What you have to do is make a post on Catfish Weekly and thank the sponsors. The sponsors are going to be Black Horse Rods, uh, Aaron Wheatley and Monsters on the Ohio, um, Whiskerware Apparel, Rob Claudfelder, one of our, our big guys that's been with us from, from the start or nearly the start, and he sponsors everything with us. He does a great job. Uh, and Chris has agreed to donate a catfish pursuit guide service trip for someone uh, to make this just an outstanding deal. Now, normally we have in the past we have give these things away um, as one person winning everything, and this year with the help of our buddy Paul Ragsdale and Paul uh, had a doctor's appointment today and he's lost his voice so he's not going to be able to join us tonight, but he'll. He'll be on the show probably next week, and then the 27th, we're going to do this, and he does the random.org thing, and we're going to pull out one winner for the two T-shirts of Aaron Wheatley's, Monsters on the Ohio. We'll pull out another name for the two sweatshirts from Aaron and Monsters on the Ohio. Then we're going to go up and, and do the deal with Rob Claudfelder and Whiskerware Apparel, and for you guys that don't know what this is, this is a solar bat bat mask. If you fish in the wintertime and you fish in bad weather, you can put this baby on and it will save you from being terribly cold. It'll keep the water and ice and crap out of your eyes. It's an amazing piece of equipment. Rob is going to give one of those away, so that will be a prize for one person. He is also going to give away two Whiskerware Apparel hoodies. Now, these are outstanding things. We wear them all the time. I love mine. I wouldn't trade them for anything in the world. And somebody's going to win two hoodies. Someone is also going to win two koozies. We'll do a black horse rod. It'll be a catfish weekly edition with Chuck's pretty little face on there. We're going to have a great time with that. And uh, I've been asked a number of times uh, why we don't do a show with uh, me working on stuff and it's really really hard to do but we're going to try to get it set up maybe next week to where I'll be at the bench and do the show from that bench working on that rod but now the the giveaway will be the 27th and uh, I'm going to put who's ever name on it that wins it will be on that rod also so uh by the time we get back from wheeler and all the stuff you're looking at sometime uh the mid part of january before you get that i want everybody to understand that uh right off the bat but uh we'll do this and then um 
Chris is going to give away a guided trip on Lake Ozarks for somebody that is fortunate enough to win a Tim, and, and that would be a great prize. Um, Chris fishes up there every day, nearly oh, every been, day. Yeah, lately, yeah. Been <laughs> He's been up there time. a lot, So, and he guides. He, he is uh, – for a long time, Chris was the only – uh, Coast Guard approved guide, the legally guiding on Lake Ozark. Now we have another one, bless his heart, for doing the right thing. Uh, and and if you want to get a, on some blue cats on Lake the Ozarks, Chris is the guy. You know, he's going to take you out and you're going to have a good time, even if it's windy, right? We'll have a party. <laughs> Every time we're out there, we have a party. Absolutely. And I, I've seen some of the pictures of his boat and stuff, and he'll get into that rock and roll with you on that radio and – and you guys will have a blast. I hope that uh, we can get out and go with Chris one of these days. We've talked about it and talked about it. Uh, it's just worked out to where I was either too busy or he had something going on or whatever. But that's how you get in on the on the uh, um, on the giveaway. Now <clears throat> there may be more sponsors added on to this giveaway, and if they do, if you make your post on Catfish Weekly and and your name will pop up on your post, and you thank Aaron Wheatley and Monsters on the Ohio, and you thank Rob Clodfelder and Whisker Wear Apparel, and you thank Black Horse Rods, and you thank Chris Jones and Catfish uh, Pursuit Guide Service. If someone comes along and throws some more into the pot, you do not have to go back and redo your post. Once it's made, if that's because I don't want to have to go through and separate them all out four or five times. But if there is, is more people that add stuff to it, once their name is added to the list, then they need you to, to mention all of them. But it, it would be for somebody to win a, a guide trip with Chris um, on Lake of the Ozarks uh, to, to take two or three minutes and write all that stuff up on there. It would be a small price to pay for a – what's a guide trip run? That's uh, $400 for two people. 400 bucks for two people. And, and that's two people. I'll, and I'll make it for – we can probably work out. If they want to bring you know more, just call me ahead of time. We'll work, I'll work with them so they can have a good time. There that's you go. Else. You can't beat a deal like that. If you want to bring an extra person or something on, if you got a couple of kids, you want to see them catch the trophy of a lifetime with Chris, and uh, he'll make arrangements to make that happen. He's got good equipment. He's got a really nice boat. It's a 24-foot CR. Mm -hmm. Uh, big motor, you guys will have a blast. Just bring your own food and drinks and stuff, and he'll see that you catch the fish. What do you think about that? Uh, that sounds good, man. Uh, I thought, can I be in the drawing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want, I want to go on Fourth of July. After some of the videos I've seen, Fourth of July would be really fun to be. On. No, you don't. Not on Lake the Ozarks, no, you don't. <laughs> You've not ever been up here on Fort July. Man, I've seen some videos, and they had looked like the biggest boat party I've ever seen in my life. They was just they'll tie them babies up, and it'll go from one end of the cove to the other, and out in the main part of the lake, and then they'll start back and do it again. Oh yeah, so I'd, yeah, that'd be some good fishing there. Yeah, I bet it's awkward fishing. <laughs> kids out there, and then a boat goes by with scenery. Yeah, and then you're like, uh, anyway, it is. <laughs> yeah. Man. yeah man. Yeah, me and Chris was talking, uh, you know, on Facebook right after the holidays, and there was a, uh, a bad boat accident. I, I can't, I don't know if it's Fourth of July or Labor Day, but uh, I think it was one of the holiday weekends. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, some guys from up north, but you know, some guys hit a hit, hit the bank or something, and it it wasn't really good. But um, yeah, yeah, it from some of the videos I've seen, it I'm surprised it's <laughs> all that happened that weekend because. Um, it looked like it got pretty crazy out there, but oh, it does. And then big boats, you know, Chris's boat is a 24 foot, and that's a big boat, it really is. But compared to some of them guys out there, they got they got boats that are big as tugboats up there at the lake. And um, some of them never leave the dock, but most of them they get out and troll around. And you got to watch out for the uh sailboats and and stuff like that. But uh, there's places that you can go up there and fish and not be involved with that. And I'm sure you go to most yeah, of the places. That's actually one of my favorite times to fish. And, you know, the boat traffic, is, you can just deal with it. Usually I'm looking for, I'm targeting other things where they're not really going to be at anyway. Right. So. Right. I know Andrew Little, he loves that lake in the wintertime. That's his, that's where he goes. And I know he's told me about the fish that he catches up there because every, Pardon me, everybody that lives up there, they don't go fishing in the wintertime because they're doing it's other cold. things. Yeah. yeah, it's cold. They don't think you can catch catfish in the winter. It's some of the best. I know Andrew's told me that he pulled uh, 
pulled up in them places and caught fish and the guy come running out of his house and say, oh, if I knew there's fish like that, I'd never let my kids swim in there. <laughs> you know, and, yep. and I'm sure that's right. But, uh, you know, that that's what you got to do. And, and I know a lot of people, and it really doesn't freeze up terribly bad up there. It right? just depends. Um, last year was pretty bad. But was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the coves usually freeze up, but it's, it's not that big a deal. Right. So the fish aren't up in that shallow water anyway until right. later on. Well, if anybody has any questions about the giveaway, send us a, a, a message on Facebook or uh, message one of us. We'll try to answer the best of our ability. This is going to be a great prize, and instead of one person winning a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of people is going to win a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I'm telling you, Whoever wins this, if you don't like it, just let me know because this is the thing for wintertime fishing. It is an amazing piece of equipment. And Cindy, this is Cindy's actually, and she loves it. She won't let me wear it. I'm surprised she let me bring it in here to show everybody. It is a great deal, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this with this giveaway. And and uh, like I say, just thank all the sponsors. And uh, whoever wins this trip with Chris is going to have a good time. If you don't like it, then you can donate the trip back to me, and I'll go with you. All right, Chuck. Let's see what you got for Chris tonight. Yeah, Chris. Uh, but what what lakes you usually uh, guide on? Uh, Warsaw, um, Lake of the Ozarks, and Truman, or do you ever hit the Missouri? I don't really like to guide on the Missouri just because I have a, I'm not consistent there at all. I can go out there and fish you know and catch the fish now and then it's just not really you know i, I like to go around consistent so uh like those are more my thing okay so uh if you're if you're going to have fun by yourself and stuff you you go hit the missouri but uh just guiding you that's not your cup of tea and no because you know if someone's paying me to go out i want to make sure that they can catch fish and grant you know it's fishing so there's no sure things in fishing but you know <laughs> I, my odds are always best with, on the ozarks you know i average 15 to 30 fish a day usually Right. So if, if somebody wanted to uh, take their guide trip on the Missouri, have you ever took somebody out on the Missouri that wanted to fish it? Yeah. I had some guys flying from out of state when we went out there. Um, I thought I was going to get robbed, actually, because they wanted to meet me in a parking lot at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> so, you know, there's something kind of screwy with that. It, it worked out good. They just were flying in. That's how it worked out. So I took those guys when we fished all morning. Um, Caught a couple of fish, didn't, you know, not anything huge, but they, they had a good time, had a good time. It was, it was fun. Yeah, you're right. You know, a lot of guys, you know, that's that's one of their bucket lists is that, you know, Missouri River's way on up there on mine. Um, you know, that would be something if if I made a venture out that far to the west, I would, I would really want to hit the Missouri River if I had my choice. And I didn't know if, if, if that's kind of the kind of choices you give people that, you know, uh, travel distances to, to fish, you know, around the Kansas City area or not. You know, I'm pretty universal about stuff. People call me about trips, and uh, it's funny because I'll get a call and won't know where they want to fish. They'll just tell me they want to go on a guide trip. And, okay, I'll book it, and then I'll forget to ask them because I'm busy a lot. You know, well, where are you wanting to fish at? <laughs> so they'll tell me, and then if they want to go to the river, I'll do it. But I explain to them that, you know, it's going to be – it's going to be a lot tougher than if we went to the Ozarks and it's not really my thing, but we can, we can do it. And a lot of times they don't care. They just want to get out there and see the, see the flying carp and the dikes and how the river works and all that. It seems like a lot of guide trips are more just educational, how to read sonar, just people wanting to get away and have fun. Yeah. That's uh, you know, it's a good way for people to, uh, to get the fast lane on this catfish. And, you know, you get out with somebody that really knows what they're doing and, um, uh, you know, you could you can get on up there and you know, and frequently ca start catching big fish pretty fast by getting a good block of instruction with a good guide. Uh, the main thing today is a uh, you know I had a good friend named Tom out with me. We hadn't fished in a couple of years. We constantly talk about going, and we were talking about sonar. Uh, same thing. I had a trip on Saturday. Um, great guys came out, and they actually wanted to see me catch bait. And that's usually I get bait the day before. Everything's you know when they show up, boats in the water, rods in the holders. <laughs> hit the ground running though they wanted to watch me catch bait so you know that's what they're paying me for and that's part of the deal and we went out and caught bait i was showing them on the uh, side scan you know this is a school of crappie because they were a small bunch and then here's what we're looking for these are shad and you can see they weren't big shad and i wanted the bigger ones and uh, sure enough we drove a little farther found some bigger shad and threw on them had you know 50 75 shad and went through and it they thought that was great so i explained what the differences are um 
things like that, how to look for fish. What kind of water do I fish, you know, spring, summer, fall. Hey, Chuck. Yeah. In chat, Brian Sanders says if you'll come up, he'll take you out on that Missouri River. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'd have to come up with some money. He does, he's probably going to want to take you to a tournament and show you how to catch fish because <laughs> I'm telling you, he come down to St. Louis a couple of times, kick ass, and took names. So uh, that would be, there would be nothing wrong with going going out with him either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know, I have a, a few times. Uh, have actually wanted to take a guide trip and actually tell the guide, hey, I want us to, uh, from the time we launched to the time the, the guide trip's over, I want us to do a mock tournament. And I want to see the way that you would perform during a tournament and, and fish the whole guide trip as if you were fishing with the guide uh, as a team doing a mock tournament i think that would be a very interesting guide trip has anybody ever asked you to do that before chris uh i actually had somebody want to book a trip and use the trip during a tournament so and i i talked to brad about it brad kilpatrick i wasn't even sure where to go with that i don't know if it's even legal to do it so uh, i stayed away from that but one thing that would suck about doing a trip like that is you're going to burn a lot of gas because i know in a tournament you run hard you know you're running and gunning and you know, I got a 300, so it doesn't take <laughs> long to do that. Therefore, it's not very cost effective. Right. So, but I would probably do something like that. I, I'm, I'm easy going. Whatever people want to do, you know, what it comes down to is you're a guide to make other people happy. They're booking their trip, so it's whatever they want to do. Yeah, but, I mean, you, yeah, you, you see a lot of these guys like, you know, the, the Ryan Casey's and the Jason Bridges that started out you know, uh, competing and placing high in these national tournaments uh, right up until they started their guide service good and then kind of stepped back from the tournament scene for a while, you know, and that's the kind of guys that I would want to jump in the boat with and say, hey, man, take me out on a mock tournament. Let's see what we can get in the boat. Let's see what our best five fish would be if today was tournament day. Uh, you know, show me how you do it. And that right there would, you know, that would be well worth the guide trip for me. Well, what happens around here a lot is you'll go pre-fish, do great, and then a front will come through, and everything you did the day before is out the window now. And, yeah, that, uh, yeah. and so you're completely starting from scratch, you know, and winging it, hope that works out. That happens in a lot of terms. It does around here for sure. In March. Yeah, that's the story of my life. You know, uh, I think every Friday last year a front came through on Friday night every week. Um, I hope it kind of, you know, gets off a little bit this year and comes through on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, but uh, every Friday, um, you know, Monsters w was pretty good this year. I was pretty impressed, but, you know, the there was a, a pretty good pressure change come through, but it wasn't as deep as the year before. Um, so, you know, the I know what you're talking about on those fronts. They really, really – I got to figure those bad boys out somehow. Well, today was like that. We went out, you know, Saturday struggled. We caught some fish, but nothing like we were looking for. And then I told Tom this morning, it's going to suck. You know, it's frigid, cold front. It's miserable. Oh, we're going to go anyway. We ain't hung out in a long time. We'll just go shoot the crap. No, you know, I'm all about that. We went out and just killed them. So, in fact, we had a rod go down. We were in an argument about who's going to get it. Rod loaded up, folded over, and he's like, uh, you going to get that? I'm, I'm a guy. You get it. You never get to fish. I just left it there. Like, oh, all right. Then it's like a Christmas tree on it. We'll just leave it over there and it keeps it. Now you know what a rod looks like with a fish on it. So they're, they quit biting over here. Look at that one. And he finally got it. And ended up being 32 pounds. So, um, but they're just, they've been good today. And, and it's not what I expected at all. So, yeah, you know, being a guide and having that uh, pressure on you where, you know, even you got to put try to put people on fish no matter what condition what the pressure is like um you know and you really don't want to go out and skunk uh what what do you usually do during a cold front to make sure that you know you try to give the your uh class the you know the best um the best fishing you can give them on that type of day Usually I'll look at the weather a few days ahead of time and call them if it's looking like something's going to come up. Because, you know, I, don't, I want them to know what our odds are. And I'll 
I'll call them and say, look, there's a weather front coming in. It's probably not going to be in our favor, but we'll, we can still go. And then uh, they usually want to go anyway. So typically a cold front, I usually downsize my baits and um, the least amount of lead as possible because they're, they seem pretty sensitive about picking baits up. Um, the rods I use have really light, fast tips. So when they pick that up, you know, with a stiff rod, they're going to feel that and be they're shy and drop it. So if you're using light lead, flimsy tip, by the time they get the rod loaded up, there's you know, usually already got the hook in their mouth far enough where you're going to be able to catch them. Uh, what other changes do you make to adjust for that? Do you uh, fish a little shallower water in flats or anything like that? It just depends what I see. Um, if I go through, it depends on the time of year also. this Like today, we were in 30 to 50 foot of water on uh, channel edges. Um, and I was setting up on ledges today. We find like 28 foot of water on a sharp drop where I could cast some over in the 15 foot of water, some straight on the ledge, and then some over in the 50. And, you know, develop a pattern off that to start catching more fish in the deep water and just move over to it. But to, this lake for the last month has been a nightmare. Um, there's no pattern. It's a free for all. You, there's fish all over the place. And trying to set up, on, you know, you'll see some, mark some set up, catch two, and then nothing. So, Pulling anchors, going to set up again. And trying to drift fish has also been almost impossible because they're starting to run current now. The lake, Truman Lake's come up, so that's also got everything completely out of whack. Fish are used to not having current, and all of a sudden they got current, so they're adjusting to that on the move a lot. It, it's just a guessing game. You know, you got to go into it open minded and, and ready to switch it up until you find what works. Yeah. So, you know, if you first one you catch with a, um, Muddy, muddy belly, you pretty much know they're all in the mud. Um, I was talking all about that today. They've been in the mud, and we were pulling them out, and uh, I was wiping them off with a rag so they looked pretty for the camera because they were <laughs> they were all covered in mud, you know. And I, I was watching us going to clean those up for you. What do you mean? I pull out my shad towel, wipe them off. There you go. And then you see they got you know pretty pink fins, and they're they're white because they've been in that deep water in the mud. But absolutely. And people don't realize that they'll do that. They'll bury right down in that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they, you know, just when you got to drag across them or, you know, precision anchor on them, if you see them and, and just crank your rod every few minutes and you know, give it a little bit of movement and hope for the best. But uh, I got to agree. Like the other day, it was a 38 special bite because <laughs> I'm always listening to some sort of music, you know, and, uh, I was giving them a hard time. The bite was pretty slow, and I kicked on the tunes real loud. And I mean, it wasn't 10 seconds after I did it, thing smashed over with a big fish on it, and they were laughing. So it's 38 special today. Keep playing that CD. Like, man. So yeah, I, we, we've done the same thing. You know, you uh, get the kid rock bite, or, you know, it depends on, you know, you can just change the CD, uh, and all of a sudden the fish will start biting. So you just leave it in there. I think it's like the barge bite. I've heard people tell me other oh, horrified of music, man. If they're horrified of music, I'd never catch a fish. I got kicker subs and everything else in my boat and 2,000 lots of amps. And, it, and I like it loud. Most people that would fish me know it. I, I'm out there to have fun like they are. And, I mean, it's 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 awesome. You turn the music up, and next thing you know, you're catching fish. So I think they just want to get in a boat with you and see what's up. They're, they hear the tunes. That's where it's at. Yeah, but that, I mean, they're, they're used to hearing it with the water skiers, you know, play constantly. They just don't quit feeding and go hide somewhere because the boat come by. Um, you know, they're they're pretty much used to it. Flatheads, I I think they're a little more sh uh, sensitive about you know, especially light and noise. When I'm, which I don't like to do, but when I'm flathead fishing, I'm usually quiet. You know, low light and waiting them out. Yeah, you know the yeah. shadow also. They're they hate shadow. They're complicated to catch. They're awesome when you do, but it's it's time consuming. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you're, you notice when you're walking around the bank before you put your boat in or something with a net and uh, you try to get you a few little sucker fish off of the boat ramp or some shad or something and the whole mossy boat ramp will be covered. And as soon as that shadow of that net gets over them, boom, everything's gone and you don't even get one fish in that net. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of them fish that hang out in there is like that. And, you know, flatheads are, you know, the same category of them. They see a shadow. Um, they know something's ain't right, and they get out of dodge. I like the flatheads are more, since they're more territorial and structure oriented. You know, you'll find a log. We marked one today on a log. I'm sure it's a flathead. Uh, flipped it on down scan. You can see it. I didn't even know there was a log there. It's apparently just washed in. There's a fish right on top of it. And it, it you can tell it was a catfish. Um, 
when we watched that for a while. But I think the Flatheads will hold on cover where the Blues are more out actively roaming, chasing schools of shad. Where Flatheads are more, you know, that's their territory. They're going to hang out there and ambush prey as they come in. So I think that's one of the big differences too. Yeah. So uh, when you have your clients in the boat, um, how much of your time do you think you really spend on an average, uh, you know, instructing them and, uh, you know, teaching them about the electronics, uh, knot tying and, you know, anything that's general in catfishing now? It just depends. Uh, some people don't even want to get out of the chair. Once they get in a boat, rod will go down and I have to pick it up out of the rod holder and hand it to them. They won't get out of the seat. They just want to sit there. And go. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it's, you know, that's, I'm fine with that. Whatever they want to do, that's what they hired me for. But then I have other people that want to see how I tie a snail knot and see how, uh, pardon my clients out there, but the worst case scenario is when they want to cast one of my bait casters and you know what's coming next, right? It's a, yeah. a big mess and that keeps me busy for a while, which I, I've let a couple people do it. Um, I let one person cast one and it's still out there somewhere. Um, <laughs> they forgot to flip the bail over and it had an eight ounce weight on it and it off it went. So um, I kind of put a stop to that. But uh, I, I spend a lot of time with them. Whatever they want to learn, I'm, I'm there to show them. That's what, they, that's what I'm there for. Uh, do, do you carry like uh, 808s, 888s, or uh, spin cast rods in your boat for guys that want to do their own casting and stuff? No, um, I've had people bring their own stuff with me, and I'm fine with that. One guy learned a hard lesson, though. He brought some pretty light action stuff, and it got smoked. Um, smashed it over after the races, spooled him, and he never even got to turn a handle on the reel. So <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, it was one of those deals I knew it was getting ready to happen. I saw it happen, and I'm like, uh, what do I do? You're going to have to hang on. Hope you got a lot of line on there. Next thing you know is that distinct, you know, ping, broke right off. So, yeah. you know, they always hit the biggest ones, hit the lightest rod in the boat. They do. Never fails. Or the one you didn't change the leader on, and you know you should have. Yeah. You got in a hurry. But I spend a lot of time with people. If they want to learn about sonar, you know, I'll talk to them about sonar. We'll drive around and look at fish. Uh, a lot of times I'll be out there and they, they question how accurate it really is, you know. Uh, and I'll drop a line right off the back of the boat underneath the transducer. And you can see, you know, a lot of times when I'm drift fishing, I'm using a two ounce weight with a three foot leader and a peg float. You can see the sinker and the peg float and the bait going down underneath the transducer, you know. And I'll let it hit the bottom and bounce it up and down. And you can actually see it, you know. And then they're blown away by it. And it, it is pretty awesome how technology has come along with that. Yeah. Um, you know, do you, when, when you're like you said, the fish you you've seen on the log today, um, you know, the stuff's gotten so clear. I've actually seen, um, you know, their whiskers and, you know, how defined it can be. Um, you know, does your customers ever see how unbelievable that is and want to take pictures of your, uh, of your screen and stuff like that uh, so they can show their friends? Um, yeah. I get that a lot. The funniest one I get is if I dive off the back of your boat and swim down there deep enough, will, you, will I be able to wave at you on the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, knock yourself out. But uh, I got a picture of a gar. Uh, it's a huge gar, and you can see it's, it's bill, his mouth open, and then the fin right back by his gill. Um, that's a screenshot I saved. So I have a lot of screenshots I save because some days you just can't find what you're looking for. And I'll go through my screenshots and show them stuff that I've taken. And, you know, you guys know I post stuff on Facebook, too, for Lawrence. Bass yeah, do y'all have uh, paddle fish in those lakes? Yes, we do. And they're, and they're confusing because they look a lot like catfish on sonar because they're a skin fish. So you get the same kind of return where it's, you know, that soft blue outline. And you'll see bright yellow on one side, and people think it's a huge catfish. But you'll... The way I've learned with the spoonies is you can tell that they have a long arch on one side, you know, where a catfish is more uniform, solid, bulky arch. A spoonbill will have a really long, extending arch on the under, opposite side where the bill is because, of, you know, it's picking up that weak return on that. Yeah. And I'll you, put it over to down scan and show them, and you can, you can pick them out plain as day. Yeah, and the guys that have – that's very important when you're telling the difference in those also. It is. Uh, we talked about that earlier before the show. You know, going through an area and it's pub. People will see. People watch my sonar like it's a TV screen, and I'll I'll be driving a boat along and I look back and there's three sets of eyes staring at me, and they're looking at my screen right in front of me. So they'll see that. I oh, look at all those fish there, and you know, and they don't understand why I'm going past it. So then, you know, they think you're, you know, we should be fishing on that. Well, then I'll go and explain. You know, here's the colors. Here's how you got this set up, and here's 
what this looks like and what it is. And, and I'll show them and then they understand. And, you know, they're pretty amazed by it. I think half the time they don't, they don't necessarily understand that it really works that way. But, you know, you guys, you've been around it, so you know it does um, yeah. based on your settings and stuff like that. Right. You know, the they don't want to get on a bunch of uh, Asian carp and, and sit on those um, or anything like that. So they just don't think you're just passing over a bunch of real big fish and you're not going to fish for them. We saw some big fish today. Um, we were driving over them. I couldn't get them to bite, but there was a big, obvious blue outline, you know, with some orange shading and a little bit of yellow on one side. And those, you know, usually I found those fish are over 30 pounds when you see that because uh, you're picking up that hardened something yellow with their head. So um, I like to see that, and they're, especially when they're holding right on the bottom like that. But we, we set up on just couldn't get them to commit. And, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. So what, what's your uh... – What's your best techniques of uh, fishing when you bring your customers out? Do you like dragging, drifting? Uh, what do you prefer? My favorite thing, and you guys call it dragging, I call it drifting. Um, you know, the peg float with two ounces of weight. Um, sometimes you can't do it here because Lake of the Ozarks is kind of like a river system, and it varies. You know, the current will vary. One day there's no current, and the next day they'll be generating water. So it's hard to drift that way, or drag, as you say. Um, I've done it. You're using the swim motor to go against the current, but it's really hard to control your boat speed. Um, that's what I found out is you can catch a lot of good fish, solid fish, but if you're going fast, you know, you're going to miss those bigger fish. They're not in a hurry to do anything, which, you know, they're, they're the top of the food chain, so they eat when they want to eat. And so a slower presentation is going to bring you those bigger fish. It's just hard to do when they're running water like that. Right. Awesome. So it varies. I'm sure you what? got some. I'm sure you got some stuff for him. I'll let you have a shot at him. I do. As a matter of fact, Chris, uh, when you're getting ready to go out on a trip, uh, you, you know, you go out the like the day before or something. You get your bait. This time of the year, how hard is it to find bait on Lake Ozark? Three throws today. Three throws. Yep. And that was enough for the whole day. I had probably eighty or ninety shad. Really nice big ones. Good yeah. ones. But I, I used sonar to find them. We went through several schools and. Um, Tom was talking to me about that. You know, what about this? What about this? And, you know, I, I call them Tic Tacs. You want to see Tic Tacs on your screen, white Tic Tacs. When you see those white Tic Tacs, those are bigger fish. So if you see, like, that's just those little, little two ventures. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to mess with that. They're a nightmare anyway. So. Yeah, you, you just got to fight them the whole time. Uh, how long did uh, did you guys go out for your trip today? Um, I met him at 7, and I think we ended up sitting around talking for a while because it was freezing cold, and we trying to talk each other out of going fishing. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it was cold. And, uh, we got out about, oh, I think we hit the water probably 7.15, and I uh, got off the water around 3.30. Well, it's a pretty good day. It was pretty a beating. I was done. You know, uh, I can usually hang. We come around that bend, and it was the ocean, and uh, beat the crap out of the boat and all my stuff. And well. Killed my dip net. So. I, as, as rough as it was, the wind was around here. I can only imagine what it was on Lake the Ozarks. And, uh, you know, for you guys to be out there, I'm pretty sure you was out there by yourself. Yeah, we we won. Nobody else is there but us. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's right. Um, your guys, how long have you been doing this? Uh, just over two years. Two years. And, and Lake O, do you ever go to Truman? Yes. You you got on Truman? I did a trip this summer uh, for a friend on Truman. So, uh, and I, it was out of my comfort zone, but that's it was a group trip, and I went with them to help them out on their deal, and didn't want to go. And struggled because I was completely out of my element. And then I thought, well, just don't overcomplicate this. This is fishing. And blue cats are blue cats are blue cats, no matter where you go. And I, once I got on that program, I went out and we caught like 27 fish. So Cool. Yeah. How, um, how do you feel about the regulations that they put on the lakes? Uh, I like that they've put a regulation on it. I wish that they would protect all the big fish, but I understand why they, you know, they, you can't do that and right. satisfy everybody. So there has to be some give and take, but you know, I, I'd rather see it just keep like most guides on the Ozarks. It's, we used to just do 10 pounds and under mm -hmm. um, some even, you know, I would be even stricter sometimes to try to keep it five pounds and under. You can get plenty of meat off those fish. Right. Absolutely. Um, well, how long do you think it'll take to where we can, can have an abundance of larger fish on the lake that i don't know i've been talking to some friends about it and 
first I started thinking, you know, maybe I just don't know how to fish anymore because I used to catch 35 to 50 pounders, you know, with some regularity, and now it's just not really happening. And then I talked to other people to find out, you know, how, how it's going in there. Everybody's kind of having the same luck, you know. The 50 pound fish has now become the 30 pound fish. So those, you just don't, I mean, I've caught some 60s and 70s down there, but you just don't come across them like you used to. Right. Well, I, I honestly think my own self that if these guys will just let it go for five to 10 years, they will not believe the size and quality of fish that those two lakes will have on them. We said we weren't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. I don't, <laughs> it is not a big deal. You can get all the fish you right. want. And if you can't, you shouldn't be booking a guide trip to feed your family. So, <laughs> yeah, okay? That's right. You can buy a lot of meat for 400 bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. My, I, I've thought all along, and, and you're right, we wasn't going to get in Oh, that. yeah, I just can't. You, you always do. Jeez. But, but, you know, guys talk about, oh, i got to feed my family with fish. Well, I'm telling you, you can take the money that you go out to on a fishing trip if you own your boat for what it costs you to go out and fish and catch 25 or 30 pounds of fish, you could go to the grocery store and buy a whole lot more groceries than what it did. And if it, and if the money is that much of an object to you, then go out and get a job. I mean, it's just that simple. But, <laughs> and earlier, you know, and I started some controversy and I tried to do it non-politically, but I was, I was flaying fish out and I think I tagged you on one of the posts even. I put it, they were all under six pounds, which mm -hmm. the 26 inch limit, you know, length fish is roughly, you know, I've done it and done it and done it just to, I want to see yes. how, what do they weigh? And they're about six to six and a half pounds. Right. I honestly think that, that nearly everybody that is our generation, and I know that you're probably not as old as I am, but I'm going to say from 30 on, roughly, we'll just use that as an example. I, I'm going to say that the majority of those folks started out fishing because it was fun, number one, and they could get some groceries out of it. And I'm going to say a high percentage of those folks used to run lines, jugs, or whatever to get more fish. And I think I know what, that I started out doing all that stuff, and I just don't do it. For one thing, I don't want to clean the damn things. It's, you know, I just yeah. don't want to do it. I'd rather go out and eat fish. But, um, you know, the thing is we got to protect those breeders. We just have to do it. And uh, Missouri finally stepped up and got a little something done. But now what they need to do is go on and get it on the, the river systems where it's, where it's really needed. And, and I think that everybody wants to go out and catch fish to eat. They should be able to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, you know, there's no reason not to go out and catch those fish and eat them. But these guys that will tell me that they can take a 70-pound fish and cut that up, and I can't tell the difference between it and a two- or three-pound channel cat, they are full of baloney. Well, I've cleaned, I can tell the difference. Back when I was keeping fish up to 10 pounds before the new red came in, I can tell you right now, when you clean just a 10-pound fish, they got more red meat, they got more fat, they got right. more toxins because they've been in the water longer. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you a 30 or 40 or 50-pounder is 10 times as bad because that's that's part of the problem. They're, all that red meat is toxins out of the lake. And, that's exactly right. And the longer that fish has been in there, it's, you know, it's just how it is. Not to mention – I used to keep big fish because I didn't know any different. No one, you know, I, I was uneducated about it, and uh, it's a lot of work, man. It is. It, it sucks. I'm not rolling one <laughs> up around and doing it. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, and for all you guys that are watching the show tonight, if you if you didn't figure it out, Chris actually has joined me in my shop tonight to do the show. So we're sitting here uh, talking side by side, and this worked out really well. We've done this a time or two before, but it, it's really worked out good. Um, what time in the spring does does the guide business really pick up? March. March. Yeah. I also do uh, spoonbill stuff too, so that takes off. I was I was going to mention that I didn't know that you done spoonbill guiding. Um, spoonbill is not a catfish. No, and there's tons of YouTube videos about it. Spoonbill catfish. It is not a catfish. Right. It is a paddlefish. It, and it's a prehistoric. They're filter feeder fish. They don't eat minnows and worms. Right. Uh, they may. I don't know, but I can tell you for the most part. They're not supposed to. Yeah. yeah. It, you may catch one in the mouth on a crappie jig, and I think it's just because it swam into it. So. Now, when, when guys are wanting to go out and catch these spoonbill, is it a guide trip for spoonbill the same cost, I assume, that what a regular yeah. trip is? Okay. Now, when, when you're out there, are you fishing with these guys? No, you're driving a boat. Uh, it's Okay. A, it's it can be a handful sometimes because these guys that sit out there and and i know there's there's a couple of guides that they 
they drag their baits along and they don't sit there and rip them rods all day long. You do that after 30 minutes. After the first 30 minutes and everybody's wore out, then you give them option B as power trolling. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not doing that. It's it's a good workout. Yeah. And they're pulling, what, a, a pound of weight? Yeah, usually a pound of weight. depends on how much current they got running. And, you know, power trolling, you can uh, you put three pounds on. And Now, uh, are you power trolling with the trolling motor or with a – With the big motor. With the big motor. Yeah. And what speed are you doing that at? Uh, about four and a half miles an hour. In fact, I learned from Rusty Pritchard. He's got videos on here. So he, I, I yeah, I've watched some of them. Rusty puts a lot of good fish in the boat. We should get him on the show sometime. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't know how that worked. I've never done it. I only went spoon building one time. The old boy liked to work me to death, and I said, the hell with that. I ain't going back. You know, <laughs> it's not – obviously, you know, I'm a catfish guy. Spoon building's not necessarily my thing, but um, – it was something else I could do. You know, if I wasn't gotten for cats, I could guide for spoonbills since there's a season for it. But it's almost as cool when you see a rod take off after you're power trolling because you put the clickers on. You're, you know, you're driving a boat, so you can't see what all is going on back there. Next thing right. you know, it's like wicked tuna. You just hear that that drag screaming. And look back, and, you know, you hit a 60-pound spoonbill with running a boat at four and a half miles an hour. So, oh, man. You know, it's, it's pretty that. cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. It'd be a lot of fun. It's uh, you know, it's it's needed. Sometimes you can't get them. You're dragging bear hooks through the water trying to catch a fish. So, but well, you know, there's lots of factors that go into that. If they're suspended, it's hard to catch them. You know, you, you what's the percentage of luck involved in snagging fish and versus catching them? It depends who you talk to. Um, I, sonar helps a lot. I'll drive to an area and you know I won't even set up on them and I'll see them stacked in there and set up you know and have fish quick. Uh, there's some guides that they'll do two or three tip, trips a day because they go limit out. Once you catch your two fish, you're done. It's not like catfish. Right, right. <coughs> <coughs> well, four and a half mile an hour, that's that's sizzling right long. You cover a lot of ground like that. Yeah, you're using, basically you're using the boat to, for instead of you're yanking the rod, you're using the boat for the hook set. So that's why you just, the speed. just run over them. And, and what size treble hooks are they? Great big ones. I'm using uh, 12 odds. 12 odds. Yeah. yeah, I've actually um, uh, retrieved some hooks and sinkers. Uh, catfish and drifting. Oh, yeah. it sucks. You know, you catch them and you end up pulling them up. And what the world is going on here? And you get them in and it'd be a pound weight and one of the great big old yep. You just get just, free let out of it. That's all the rest of it's a nightmare. It is the most of them guys use Dacron or something. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, rope. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big old pin reels and stuff like that. So I'm not going to knock them. People love to do it. So, you know, it's, hey. uh, it's that's great. I love the catfish. They like to catch Boonville. And, you know, I've got friends of mine that come down from up north. Uh, every year and stay for weeks on end and they fish all them snagging tournaments and uh they have a great time doing it that's their deal and i'm glad that they're having fun uh that's that's why you go on the water to have a good time it's awesome because you don't have to catch <laughs> oh it's that's the best thing yeah. about it you can go to bed early relax i don't gotta catch bait all i gotta do is put gas in the boat and we're good fill her up and let's roll yep and Heck uh, yeah. that whole shad deal which you know can be and in fact, I think I gave you some shed one of Brad's tournaments because mm -hmm. it, was, it was hard to find that. It year. was hard and to come up with that. Year. I finally found some. That's, I mean, that's probably as a guide. You know, I have other friends that are guides also. Our biggest nightmare is usually bait. If we can find bait, typically you could find fish, but you've got to have bait to fish. Right. And I have people show up. I had some people show up on a guide trip, brought chicken liver. Uh, they, didn't, really? they didn't understand the concept, you know, of how things, how we do business. And it was, I, I appreciate it. It was cool, you know, but I explained well. Here's what we're going to do, and we could use your chicken liver if you want to. But <laughs> well, I think there's a there's a high percentage of people that's never fished the uh, out of a boat or on big water that doesn't understand that those big fish, as a general rule, doesn't bite chicken livers and hot dogs and stuff like that. Now you can use them to catch all the little channel cats, which for me that's the best eating. Uh, but regardless, you know, you catch all the one half, two pound channel cats you want, even small blues <laughs> off of livers and hot dogs and fishing worms and stuff like that. And, uh, I've caught some, some, uh, flatheads that weigh three or four pounds off of, off of fishing worms. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're taking a guy out on a trip that he's paying money to go on, you're looking for something a little bigger as a rule, aren't you? Unless they specify that. And I've had that, um, I actually had an issue last year. We caught everything was over the slot. And I'm thinking, you know, we knocked this one out of the park. And we caught lots of big fish. And they were a little frustrated because they wanted to keep fish to take home. I thought, well, 
I'm not sure I'm going to, you know, maybe we should get the chicken liver. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a, but and I understand their point. I wouldn't let them keep any of their two overs. It's just the rule I stand by. Um, I can tell you one thing, too. You never say never with bait. You never say no one's going to catch a big fish on a piece of chicken liver because someone will go out there tomorrow and make you look like an idiot. They'll catch a 80-pound blue <laughs> on chicken liver or bubble gum or some nonsense. It, it never fails. I, I've seen it. So. Yeah, yeah. Brian Sanders like to know how many uh, – how many fish over 40 you think is in the Lake of the Ozarks? Lots? Jeez. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's a big lake. I mean, it's huge. And it is. I usually target, uh, granted, I've been going farther and farther down this year, just looking at new water, trying, you know, I'm tired of pounding the same areas over and over and over. I, you know, I need to challenge myself a little bit and get out and expand a little bit and uh, mm -hmm. find new water. And, and it's, it's actually fun to do. And I'm, I'm fishing farther down than I ever have, you know, around the 40 mile marker. Um, Better quality fish down there so far. Um, it's a lot different. The water's a lot deeper. Um, the boat traffic is obviously an issue. There, that's where all the huge party boats run all the time. As far as how many, I mean, that's a hard number to. I mean, that's how do you do right, something like right. that down? I mean, thousands, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure that uh, if they will give it the five or ten years, uh, I feel like the number. I think the number of fish over 30 will double in five to 10 years if people will let it happen. Well, like we had a 28 and a 32 today. You That's know? pretty good. So, and we were just, it sounds bad. We were just screwing around a couple of buddies, you know, having fun just to get out and lost just to game. And uh, right. yeah, Rod went down and we didn't even do anything with it. For <laughs> just let her sit there. <laughs> took a picture even. It was funny, but you know, so they're there. They're, I'm not saying they're not there, right. but there's probably a hundred pound fish in there. Um, I just, well, I know I've seen a lot of 60s and 70s come out of there, and I don't fish the lake too much. Just and, and I'm a I like Truman, you know, and uh, the the reason I like Truman is because it's normally not always got current, mm -hmm. and I like current. That's one thing I have against lake fishing is that it just, there is no current, and I, I've never got along with fishing without current. I always fish river, so when you go to a dead spot like that, it, it's it's hard to hard for me to to get on them, but uh, I know that there's been some really good fish caught out of Lake Ozark, and and it seems Absolutely. like any place from the the dam that separates Truman off, the further you go, the better the fishing gets. It, and it varies. There's times in the spring, you know, you can put in right there at Drake Harbor and not go a mile and catch all the fish you want to catch. Do you think uh, those fish are coming up? I think so. Yeah. You know, the blue cats are. They don't. I don't really think they just hold in one area. I think they're no, always they on the move. Uh, you know. That's why, and you've had this before, you're out fishing, and if you get one fish, you're probably going to get another one pretty quick. They run in schools, mm -hmm. and they're usually they're competing for food. That's why those hits are hard. They're they're right. all together, and they see a bait, and they, they hammer it. Yep, I agree. Chris, are you aware of the catfish conference that's coming up in uh, Kentucky here? No. Let, um, let me see if I can come up with it. The, the catfish conference is coming up the 28th of um, – of February and what's the name of that town, um, Chuck? Uh, I can't really. Uh, uh, it's around Lexington. Versailles. Uh, Starts with a B. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up now. Versailles, Kentucky, and Versailles. and it'll be uh, February the twenty second. Uh, Jeff Jones Marina Marine and uh, Steve Douglas with Monster Rod Holders are putting on the thing, and all these people from all over, all the big names of Rants and Humminbird and blah blah. Ever everybody that has anything to do with catfishing is going to be there. They're going to have booths set up and stuff. And I didn't know if you was aware of that or not. Uh, we're going to go down and, and try to do a show down there, and it'll be a great time. I was going to mention that today I got a message from Larry Muse, and Larry is going to be at the conference. He's going to be visiting with people and asking questions, and he said that he will for sure have another great tip for everybody down there. So if you want to see Larry and visit with him and find out what kind of tip he's going to turn us on to next, that'd be a good time to be down there the 27th. Now, Larry – uh, introduced all of us to to his his dragon rig uh, uh, dragon tail Steve calls it 
It's a great looking little outfit. I haven't had a chance to try one yet, but if if he entered to that tool, there's no telling what he's going to talk about when we get down at the catfish conference. So you guys that are trying, trying to decide if you want to go or not, you need to make sure you get down there to For Sales, Kentucky, February 27th, and show up down there, and everybody in the business is going to be there. So you need to make an effort to get down there. You're, it's probably the weather's probably not going to be good up in for the northern people anyhow. So travel on down there and see everybody and have a good time. That's, I think that's what we need to do. It'd be a lot of networking. It'd be good. Well, yeah, you know, like I say, all the big guys are going to be there. We're all going to have a good time. And uh, if we can do a show, we'll try to run as many people through there. As long as they have a good Internet connection and in that dealership, they should have a great Internet connection. We'll, we'll set up a little thing, and we'll talk about catfishing and fishing rods, and we'll talk about Larry Muse, and we'll talk about Chris Jones, and we'll talk about Aaron Wheatley. I guarantee you we'll talk about Aaron Wheatley. And, and we'll have a really fun time, and I think everybody that gets a chance needs to, to be down there. Um, tell us about your boat, Chris. The good parts or the bad parts? Just tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a big, good-looking boat. <laughs> Thanks. It's been, it's been great. It's had a couple little issues, but uh, overall, I like it. I hate putting gas in it because I can't keep my hand out of the throttle. Right. You can't have a hot rod and not step on it. That's right. We did it today all day long. But uh, it's a uh, 2009 uh, ProCat 240 with a 300 horse Suzuki on it. Um, it's it runs good. It's got jack plate on it, um, Driftmaster rod holders uh, all over the thing. Um, Lawrence HTS 12. Uh, already said the stereo stuff. Um, right. Yeah, that's, I've seen the pictures. You put some time in on that radio deal. <laughs> well, that, that's what I like to do. I, you know, it's, it keeps, He's pretty happy. So, and it, you'd be amazed how many people are happy out in the boat listening to oh, music. Oh yeah, you know, Cindy so. likes to listen to the boat. But if the Cardinals come on, we're to listen to them Cardinals, especially if they're playing them Reds or the Cubs, so we can listen to them beat them guys down the ground. I had my first air guitar incident in the boat the other day. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> on a guy trip. So <laughs> he's jamming ZZ Top and caught me off guard. I look out of the corner of my eye, and this guy's ready to take a picture. I'm like, oh, you guys are killing me. So, you know, and that was on a trip Saturday. You know. People have fun out there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why as, you go. Exactly. If they're not having fun, then. Yeah. That's why you go. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was funny. I'm still laughing about it. Like, <laughs> man, here we go, you know, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, Lyle, Aaron yeah. Wheatley's got a question. He's wanting to know uh, what color palette that uh, is used, is Chris Jones uses on his Lawrence. Uh, I think I talked to Aaron about that. I run, I think it's just the, the number one, the the number one palette um, on the side scan. I use the blue, which I think is nine. Um, there's so uh, the, just for me, the blue on side scan shows up better images, you know, and, and for everybody, it's a little bit different. You constantly have to adjust it though. If you want to like for different water temperature, you need to adjust your color line. I adjusted mine a little bit today. I'm right at a uh, 68%. When it's warmer out, I usually run about 73. Uh, and that's this is a whole deal we can get into hours talking about but i, I run on uh i think it's palette number one just the basic white one and it shows the bottom is yellow and orange and red um that to me that's easiest to read do you think that on sunny days cloudy days different days uh different palettes show up better and worse than others I, I do i do too and different water also i mean i'll, I'll get on the, the lake and if the water's clear i'll you know, you could bump the sensitivity way up. And uh, I was doing that with some guys the other day, and they were, you know, what's all this? What's all this? That's just clutter. Well, what's clutter? It's just it's just picking up noise in the water. Those aren't fish. And I turned it way down and then couldn't even hardly see the bottom. So I explained, look, you know, you want to run as much clutter as you can tolerate. And then we marked a big fish, and I showed them, see all this clutter? And you see this fish right there? Oh, yeah. You know, and I backed the, son the sensitivity off, and that fish disappeared. So, you know, People have, you can have great sonar, but if you don't have it adjusted right, it's not going to help you at all. And I believe that you, ch I, I know I do, I change settings on mine nearly every time I take it out. I change mine several times a day. I yeah. change it today, especially on side scan and down scan. I'm constantly bumping up, you know, um, contrast. And until you, it, 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 shallower water, you, you need less. Deeper water, you need more. I agree. Um, and, and then it varies on what kind of water you're in. The river's difficult. You know, it's muddy, so you don't you don't get the, the sound and, you know, traveling like you, you do on a lake. And it's moving. 
Yep, and it's moving, so it carries your sonar signal. That's that's right. A lot of a lot of things like that go on that people don't even think about, and it's an absolute fact. So. Well, that's you know, I, I think that uh, anybody that that gets in there and and wins uh, got tripped with you. I think they'd have a great time. I know that that, that uh, I can't wait till we get a chance to go out and do some fishing, and we'll have a blast. Whether we catch any fish or not, we're gonna have a good time. We'll catch some fish somehow. <laughs> I don't give up that easy, man. Come on. Uh, I understand. So. I understand. Sometimes I just, uh, uh, John Nordyke, good friend of mine, uh, got a trip with um, Ryan Casey. It's been several years ago now, and he called me up and he said, hey, I bought this trip. Would you like to go? And I said, yeah, but I, I don't really want to fish. If you bought the trip, you catch the fish. Well, we, we sat there and caught fish and caught fish and caught fish, and I went back, and I spent the rest of my day back there talking with Ryan about his electronics and settings and what he looked for and this and that and let john catch the the last how many ever times of the fish we caught a ton of fish and we was down at st louis and we just had a blast but uh you know that was worth it all to me just to hear somebody else's views and opinions and what they look for and what they don't look for and we're talking about february i believe it was when we took that trip and it was cold and john wanted to learn how to how to drift and uh, Ryan told me, he said, well, now I'll show you how to do it. He said, but we're not going to catch any fish. It's too cold. Yeah, they're not active. They're, they're laying They up. wasn't active, but we set everything up and showed him how to go about doing it. And uh, if you don't know John, since that day, he's come a long ways, one angle of the year. And uh, he's he's like a sponge. If somebody tells him something, I don't think he ever forgets anything. I mean, he retains it really well. So uh, he's done very well. Uh, and, and we're so happy for him. But, yeah, it, it was a great day that day. But, uh, but the point is it's not always about catching a lot of fish or big fish. The knowledge you get is worth as much as the fish you're catching a lot of and times. No, it took me a long time to learn this stuff. You know, I didn't just get a book. Here you go. You're a guy. Go do this. Now you know everything. And I still don't know everything. I'm far from it. You know, well, we sure. talked about that today. The day you stop learning things is the day that you need to quit. I yeah, agree. Every day I pick up something new out there. Uh, I pick up stuff from clients. You know, kind of, we share stories. I do seminars. We I talk about some stuff in seminars, and I'll, someone will throw something at me. And, well, you know, I might give that a shot. And uh, sometimes, you know, if the bite really good, you switch it up a little bit and try to uh, change your game, see if you like something better. And sometimes, you know, I do. Uh, it just depends. The yeah, drift thing. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Chris would uh, love somebody to catch their personal best while they're on a trip with him, but. You yeah. know, every, everyone's ultimate goal is, you know, to, to catch their personal best when they're out on their own, with, you know, with a friend. Uh, you know, that that's the ticket. You know, if you're off, I would consider it if I caught a personal best and I was off with a guide, um, I wouldn't even really consider that my personal best because I didn't find that fish and, you know, really catch it myself. I'm counting. Um, I got to give Jason Ridges a jab here, uh, and I, I met Jason a few times. But there's a, a gentleman named Matt Donovan from Kentucky, or Georgia, and he's on a mission to catch a fish in every state, which is absolutely awesome. He fished with me in Missouri, and we caught uh, several two to five pounders all day. So problem solved. We got your fish, and then we knocked it out of the park at the end of the day with a 54 pounder on Lake of the Ozarks. So he went back happy. I was thrilled to death. But you know, it was like fishing with a best friend. We had, we bonded out there and had a had a ball. It was it was one of those trips you don't want to go back. It was just fun. He called me September 15th last year to come to Kansas to catch a Kansas fish. And you know there's more pressure doing that than there is anything else because you've got to catch a, a fish of some sort. <laughs> I, I thought, you know, we're gonna we're gonna catch a bluegill if we got to but, you know, you can't let that guy down. And, and he's a great guy. So we went out in uh, Kansas and he caught the first day we went out there and we got smoked. Nothing. Um, yeah, it's, it's on, now I'm in panic. <laughs> right. Uh, next day, um, I had to go in for a medical procedure and had to wait for all the meds to wear off so I could take him out there <laughs> and, uh, finally, you know, got okay on that. We went out there again and knocked it out of the park that day. He caught, he caught, a, a several high thirties, a uh, couple forties. I told him to contact Jason to go fish for his, uh, Alabama fish. And I get a text this weekend. Hey man, sorry. I just got a new personal best and he's showing me. <laughs> Picture of a 65-pound fish. Which, uh, congrats to both you guys. That was absolutely awesome, and I'm glad you could do it for him. So, and Matt's a great guy, and you, you already know that if you fished with him. So, but you know, 
it, it hurt a minute. I was like, ah, dang, I just got knocked off my my platform here. But on the same note, I, you know, absolutely awesome to see anybody catch a fish in your boat. It's it's well, it, Jason it's, it's Bridges awesome. is is a really good guy. Yep, he's he, he's an excellent guy. He's a genuine fine fellow. I enjoyed visiting with him down at the at the Wheeler tournament last year. We had a great conversation. Met his wife and. We had a really good time. Mike Mitchell's another guy that guides down at, down in that area that is a really good guy. He puts a lot of people on some giant fish. And, again, good people. Those guys, they got it going on. And, and uh, there's so many quality guys around that if somebody calls me up and, and says, hey, I'm going to such and such, who do I need to contact it to take a trip with? Well, you know, if you're going to St. Louis, you get Jason Jackson, you get Ryan Casey. If you're going down there, they, you get them. The thing that I'm going to tell people is get you a Coast Guard approved guide to make sure you're with someone that has the credentials to get you in and out safely and put you on fish. That is the biggest thing that you need to do. Well, one thing about it is, um, and I've had people that have been with Ryan, and I know he's had people that have been with me, and it's like, Indirectly, somehow or other, we're bouncing people off each other. You know, mm -hmm. I get people that want to fish St. Louis. Well, it's not cost effective, and I don't know anything about it over there to tell my boat and, and try it, which I, I'm not a, opposed to it. But Ryan, you know, they fish that over there. <laughs> In fact, I, I remember calling you uh, last year because I didn't know anybody over there you right. know, who, who's who's not booked up right now. Right. And you know, and I'm sure it comes back my way too. And you know, I have sent several messages and talked with. Um, uh, Michael and Terry Little John tried to get them on the show, and it seems like they're just so busy. I think that if they would come, ever get a chance and jump on here, I think that uh, we'd have a really good show with them. Those two down in Texas absolutely put a lot of fish in the boats. I saw her on a video, Mark and Fish on side scan, and set up on it and caught that beast. That was a great video. That was that awesome. Done. She's all by herself out all there. All by herself, yeah. Rocked it. So, yeah, it just doesn't get much better now. No, it don't. And, and uh, you know, uh, both of them got their own boats. Uh, as a rule, I don't think they guide together. They separate and go on, and, and a man and woman team like that doing the things that they do. And, and they wanted some tournaments, too. I mean, they're pretty they're pretty tough. So, yeah, I hope that uh, they're listening tonight, and maybe they'll come on and, and visit with us. We'd have a lot of fun with those guys, too. But, uh, you know, it's uh, there's plenty of good quality guides around. Don't don't spend the same amount of money for a second-rate guy that don't have the credentials. Do it right and get her done. Well, Chuck, what else for tonight? Uh, two weeks till winter blues. Two few, weeks. Two till weeks and a few days. Yeah, it's not going to be too far off. It's not too far off. I know everybody's getting ready. I, I can't wait. I know that Daniel's got everything lined up and ready to go and, and uh, providing the weather's good. It's going to be a great turnout, and we're going to have a good time down there. And uh, I think he's going to have a lot bigger crowd than he realizes is coming again. Yeah, it's um, – you know, I don't blame a lot of guys from up north. I know I'd be the same way. But, you know, you got family you, you're leaving and you got to get back to. And, you know, a lot of them guys, it's going to be a spur-of-the-moment thing. You know, they're, they're pretty much saying – if the weather looks good on a seven-day forecast, I'm, I'm making a break for it. If it don't, I'm just going to stay at the house. Uh, well, and if we get a big ice storm or something somewhere between now and then, uh, I probably would think think about going, you know, taking the trip down there, pulling a boat and stuff too. But, uh, you know, if the weather's halfway decent, even if it's pouring down rain, we're going to go, you know. Uh, that's just kind of the way that works out. Right. Well, Chris, every week when we have a guest on, we let them go through any sponsors or people that they would like to thank, and I'll give you the opportunity to do that if you want to. Absolutely. All First, right. friend, I want to thank you guys for having me on the show. Um, I well, appreciate it. Well, well, short notice deal, and uh, I didn't even get your message for a while, and then you know I was in the middle <laughs> of the lake when I got it. So, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my main sponsor, Bass Pro Shops and Lawrence Electronics. Um, Driftmaster, Rod Holders, uh, Okuma Reels, and uh, Bottom Doors Tackle has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, they, they've taken great care of me. Good guy. You cannot ask for anything better, and I, I send a lot of people their way. So um, That's all I have for now. If anybody has any questions about sonar, I, 
I know I guide and I get paid for it, but I also love to help people out. So if someone is having a problem with something or has a question, or, or call me. You can shoot me an email or call me, and I'll, I'll be glad to walk you through something. But uh, I do it a lot. So. You can't beat a deal like that. If you have a, have questions about your Lawrence sonar or, or anything else, you can call Chris, and he'll help you out if he can and do all he can for you. And, and uh, man, we really appreciate you taking your time out, driving over to my house and sitting here and being with us. We had a great time. I think it was a good show. We appreciate it so much that you uh, donate the guide trip, and I know somebody will be thrilled to have that. Um, I can't wait myself to see who the winners will be, but we'll have a good time, and, and I hope everybody enjoys the fact that we split it up amongst a bunch of other people so where one person doesn't win the whole thing. I think it'll be a lot more fun for and, and other people have the chance. I only have one thing that I would like to mention. This right here, I don't know how well you can see this, is an expandable measuring device. People ask me, I get so many messages on how we measure fish in a boat. And this thing will go to 36 inches. It stays in our boat. It lives in our boat. We do not have 34-inch uh, rules in the rivers in Missouri. I, it's coming. In fact, I would like to encourage all of the tournament directors to grow a pair and put them 34-inch rules in effect on your tournaments. That way, it'll show that the Department of Conservation that we're serious about this. I know you're not going to do it, but I'm going to recommend that you do it. It's a good thing, and it should be done. This little tool don't take up no space in your boat hardly at all. Anybody that's going to be in a tournament, and I hope all the directors for all the areas that have uh, the 34-inch or 35-inch rule in their states requires people to have this next year. It will stop a lot of crap. I don't want to get involved with that. But this is about a 5 or $6 thing that you can pick up and know everybody can have one. There's a whole bunch of different ones. This is just the one we got. And with that, thank you for watching Catfish Weekly. Be sure to thank all the sponsors and get in on the uh, giveaways. It'll be the 27th of December. Till next week, for Chuck Davis and I'm Lyle Stokes and Chris Jones. See you later.